Ava Chris Tyson, formerly known as Chris, is a popular transgender influencer. As a member of the Mr. Beast crew, she's been involved in many of his videos since he started his channel in 2012. They had met in high school, were roommates, and they went on to climb the YouTube ladder together hand in hand. Unfortunately, some allegations levied at Chris have started to really rock the boat, causing Chris to leave the channel entirely. Today, I aim to dissect all these allegations impartially to determine what Chris did do, what Chris didn't do, and allow you all to draw your own conclusions. Mr. Beast began uploading videos in 2012, hopping on the at the time very successful Minecraft trend. This would then evolve into other kinds of gaming content, Call of Duty commentary videos, rant videos about Jacob Sartorius, really anything was being thrown at the wall to see what stuck. But Jimmy would find his first real success with his marathon videos, counting to 200,000, where he actually counts to 200,000 for almost 24 hours straight. 199,999. 200,000. Woo! watching Dance Till You're Dead for 10 hours. We finished, oh. All right, well, I just sat here for 10 hours. I gotta poop. Jimmy would take on any absurd challenge that he thought could get him views. He also began incorporating his friends into his content more. And there was Chris right from the beginning. As his videos increased in budget and production value, Jimmy continued to bring his friends with him. For a long time, Chris represented the quintessential gun and truck loving guy, an all American icon. But this image began to change as Chris's feelings about gender also did. Chris's appearance began to change to be much more feminine with painted nails and long Longer hair. It was clear he was experiencing some questions about his identity, which would finally be confirmed in April of 2023 when he announced he was using hormone replacement therapy. Many were critical of this decision, as they believed Chris being trans would be leaving his wife and child behind. Others were supportive, and Chris defended himself by saying that he's still a good parent to his child. Those who are anti-trans were not a big fan of Chris to say the least, and they weren't afraid to voice their discontent over the next few years. Enough of the fans were critical of him that in April of 2023, Sunny V2 posted a video positing that Chris's transition itself could be a brand risk for the channel, considering how many people around the world are not trans positive. At the time, many were critical of it, with even Mr. Beast himself responding. Chris isn't a nightmare, he's my friend and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. Sunny's video got a lot of backlash, with a dislike ratio of 40%, far below his channel average. But on social media, the narrative persisted among certain creators. In June of 2024, Nick Merck said that Chris should be ashamed of himself, while Mr. Beast defended him, saying, Ava is always with her kid and doesn't go on shoes to spend more time with him. Tuckman is always smiling, not sure why this rumor is a thing. Jimmy continued to defend his friend despite the hate, and with that, his channel continued to grow, reaching 300 million subscribers in July of 2024. But just as Jimmy was reaching his biggest success, he and Chris Tyson were about to face their biggest controversy. On July 16th, 2024, Aedrox posted a video titled, This Video Will Make You Hate Chris Tyson. The video goes through a series of tweets posted prior to 2020, and in these tweets, Chris expressed at the time his undying admiration for Shadman, a controversial artist known for drawing children in compromising positions. Some of these amount to lolly, meaning drawn images of underage characters in very gross contexts, basically sexualizing people who are way too young to be sexualized. Back in the day, I actually made a video about Shadman that detailed his strange history. Shad was known for controversial artwork, in 2011, he drew art of his own mother. The following year, internet animator Ed Gould, creator of popular webcomic turned serial animation Ed's World, would tragically pass away due to cancer. In response, Shadman drew him being ripped by the Grim Reaper. But the extent of his depravity wouldn't surface until 2017. In January, leaked Discord messages from Shadman show him posting set photos of Daphne Keen, captioning her as being and calling her an IRL lolly after watching interviews of her. More messages from March 6th show Shad stating that he'll be re-watching the film alone so he can once again see his girl, Daphne Keen. While some have shed doubt on the veracity of these messages, it's hard to believe they're not real when only three days later, Shad posted an eight-image set of the actress being brutally onto his website. At the time, she was only 11 years old. Disgusted, Null, the owner of Kiwi Farms, reported Shadman to Daphne Keene's talent agency, causing Shad to receive a cease and desist email from her lawyers. It's worth noting that at this time, a lot of popular creators were supportive of Shadman. He had a lot of influential friends, and by extension, millions of supporters. One such supporter being Chris Tyson. Chris personally bought Shadman's artwork and tweeted it at him to show how much of a fan he was. Chris had tweeted about wanting to see Shad draw Beast Boy from Teen Titans as a trap. Guess you could call 
call that foreshadowing. In response to a cropped image of Caillou being touched by his mother, Chris said, help, I need an adult. And there are a lot of instances like this where they're responding to other similar images of very suggestive situations with minors. In one video shot at Chris's apartment, you can see Jimmy Beast himself in the background where Shad's art is on the wall. There's this one particularly gross tweet where Chris says, nothing gets my knob cranking like some lolly. It's very clear that Chris Tyson was a big fan of Shad Man. The question lies in if he knew everything Shad was up to. Drawing underage fictional characters like this is bad enough. Drawing real children like this is on another level of horror. Another person who fell into Shad Man's degenerate line of fire was Keemstar, the host of Drama Alert. On November 8th, an anonymous user asked Shad Man on his Tumblr if he'd draw Keemstar's daughter performing on Donald Trump. At the time, Keemstar's daughter was only seven. Shadman stated on Twitter that he'd do it if Donald Trump won. So, three days later, when Donald Trump won the election, Shadman decided to post art of Keemstar's daughter as a compromise for the bet. While not explicitly suggestive, the implications of even putting this image on his largely lolly-concentric site was enough to cause backlash. In response, Keemstar simply stated that he was calling the cops, not wanting to feed any more attention to someone who was capable of doing worse. So, one of his good friends came to bat for him instead. What you did by make drawing this picture, putting it in context on your website with a bunch of other pictures of little naked girls was f***ed, especially considering it's Keemstar's daughter. He doesn't deserve that. Why target his daughter? On this stream, Shadman admits that he may have gone too far. He flatters Colossal, stating that because he respected him, he was going to take down the image. However, following the conversation, he failed to do so, deciding to keep the post up on his website, as well as continue drawing very similar art in the following months. In a later edit to the description of the drawing, Shad writes that he was keeping the art archived to prove that it was not and that he would not draw any more of it. He then claims that he never actually considered going through with anything actually explicit. I highly doubt that. With it being discovered that Chris was a fan of Shad, Keemstar obviously had something to say. He commented that Chris supported Shadman, the artist that drew his daughter. This is a known fact. Privately, me and Chris Tyson even had a conversation about this roughly a month ago as it still upsets me. But this is not the only criticism being made of Chris Tyson. It all started with this video by Prism42, a small creator who went through some old logs of Chris and found interactions with someone named Lava GS. Lava is a small creator and video editor who was a fan of Mr. Beast before he blew up, apparently being among the first 500 people to subscribe to his channel. Eventually, Lava managed to appear in a video titled, I made 100 players escape an impossible maze. Lava, Pluto, assemble! Hi. Prior to this, he won a Mr. Beast giveaway and was sent a CSGO knife signed by him. And amidst the many interactions he had with Mr. Beast and the crew, Chris reached out to him and they started communicating online. Prism showed Chris offering Lava a position as a stream moderator and calling him dad, juxtaposing it with the fact that Chris was 20 and Lava was 14. Eventually, Chris sent him a snap that says coming for America, along with Lava saying that he is a different man off camera. You might think that, oh man, this must be some weird uh, 4th of July joke. Nope. It's not 4th of July. You can clearly see the date right there. This guy would have been like uh, 15 at this point. And uh, why are you sending a 15 year old a message saying coming for America? Why are you DMing a 15 year old anyways on Snapchat? Why are you doing that? Some of their interactions were perfectly normal, such as playing Uno together and generally talking to each other, while others were not so normal by today's standards. For example, Lava joked about Chris having a addiction, which to some implies that Chris, as an adult, had talked about having a habit with a 14-year-old boy. Another unwholesome bit of interaction was when Chris advertised their Patreon account by promising to release nudes if a certain goal was reached. This is clearly a joke, since no nudes were ever released, but Lava responded by saying he was going to be the first patron and calling him Big Boy. The two exchanged a few more replies until Chris said, I shared some fire nudes for you. Please no share. As questionable as joking about this kind of stuff is in and of itself, when an actual kid is interacting with you, it goes a step further, and it's definitely not the wisest move to get them in on the joke. In another exchange, Chris shared an image of tabs on his computer, highlighting a tab that said dank memes. That's how you know how dated this stuff is. Goddamn. 15 year old Lava remarked, this is a bad way to hide your in another instance, Lava replied to Chris and Gamersup saying, Love how I set up that embed. It shows you looking sexy. There are many more minor things, such as Lava asking Chris Tyson to be his valentine, calling him dad a lot for some reason, and weird sexual jokes that Chris should have known would be inappropriate to share with a minor. It's not these exchanges on their own that are incriminating, but the fact that they were seemingly normalized and made a lot of people wonder what kind of interactions went on in private. And we do know they had some Discord calls, just the two of them, which many see as weird. Combined with the lolly stuff and the Shadman connection, it becomes particularly concerning, especially since Lava met up with Chris Tyson in real life at one point. Although it must be acknowledged that the entire Mr. Beast crew was apparently present for this, and none of them has said that any wrongdoing happened. As this topic was getting more and more attention, it wouldn't be long before those involved had to speak up. 
A lot of YouTubers were reporting on the allegations. Namely, content creators A Cheeto and Sensitive Society had covered the Shadman discourse and condemned Chris for being such a huge fan. Seemingly, Lava hadn't actually seen these videos and decided to include a screenshot of them in his tweet where he addressed the situation. However, what he actually said changes the narrative quite a bit. He says, These videos are massive lies and twisting the truth. Ava never did anything wrong and just made a few edgy jokes. I was never exploited or taken advantage of. Can you do me a favor and comment on these videos and tell them to stop spreading lies? The situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. I am not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos at all. Regardless of how this potentially exonerated Chris, since Lava himself claimed no exploitation happened, this was far from over. First off, Sensitive Society responded by pointing out that he himself had never talked about the Lava situation, mainly focusing on the other aspects of Chris's questionable online activity and associations. But of course, it's also worth noting that grooming victims often don't even know that they were groomed and take a long time to realize it, some even justifying what happened to them, which cast a bit of doubt on Lava's defense of Chris. There were a few other factors that led to many people questioning the narrative, one being the very strange course of action that Prism took to get this information out there. Specifically, when he got frustrated that his investigation wasn't getting covered, he tried getting EDP445 and Chris Chan, two degenerates in their own right, to talk about Chris Tyson. This isn't a police investigation, obviously, but the way this kind of process gets handled matters if you want it to be credible, and associating it with two people who are not respected or taken seriously by anyone is certainly one of the stupidest things you can do. In addition, Prism said, Mike Clum's documentary put me in a position where I had to release the information, despite the fact I knew Chris Tyson would delete everything once he found out. Chris found out because Lava GS is still in contact with him. It's too late for him. Not only do we have screen recordings, but there exists archive web pages as well. I'm still not done investigating him, as well as getting out the information. We'll just have to see how this unfolds. If you didn't catch that, he's basically admitting to rushing the release of this information and doing a half-assed job of it. This worsens when you take into account that he actively complained about Aadrox stealing his video when, if his genuine objective was simply to expose Chris as a predator, he shouldn't have any issue with other people also covering the same topic. He sort of walked back on this and said it was good more people were hearing about this, but still, this detracted from the impact of the expose. Another factor for people still frustrated with him is that, in his video, he said that there was much more to the situation that people didn't know, but failed to include it. To suggest someone is a groomer isn't something you can really do by leaving out those loose ends and making open-ended allusions to incriminating evidence you aren't showing for reasons. Put it in the f***ing video then. Like, it's so frustrating that you've just done a 40-minute video and then it's like, there's a lot more you don't know. Why wasn't that in the f***ing video, bro? Like, dude, why haven't you put the interview out? It's been over a month. Prism also went out of his way to criticize other YouTubers for not covering the situation when he contacted them. And then now he all of a sudden I think, like, uh, suddenly makes the video as soon as it blows up. Yeah, to give a more concise timeline, basically, Achido knew about it and he just didn't care. All right. That's yeah. It. There are a lot of issues with this. First off, YouTubers aren't obligated to report on every allegation or degenerate you bring to them, which is especially relevant when the evidence isn't 100% conclusive. You're basically expecting them to take the risk of suffering potentially career ending backlash for falsely accusing someone of being a predator. Secondly, pairing this complaint about A Cheeto's coverage with the accusation that Aadrox stole his video really makes it seem like Prism is just mad for not getting enough credit, which again detracts from the expose. Getting more into the allegations, Prism claims to have interviewed Lava GS about this, where it was revealed that Chris had actually gotten Lava his job as a video editor. When asked if Chris knew the age of Lava at the time those comments were made, Prism insisted that Chris did know, but didn't have a great answer when asked for proof. In terms of like what he told think, Chris Tyson, I think we would have to look through the evidence, but I think there could be yeah. something like that there. Sure. I'm not, I can't remember from the top of my head. It's somewhat reasonable to assume that even if Chris didn't know initially, there's no way Lava's age continued to be unknown after they talked for a very long time and even worked together. But if you're going to come out and make an accusation, you have to have something more than reasonable assumptions to base it on. Additionally, the chain of evidence, if we can call it that, was somewhat tainted. The interview Prism conducted with Lava GS, where some of the information came from, was done under the false pre pretense of a job interview. Basically, Prism offered Lava a job as a video editor, and that's how we got him talking about Chris. Additionally, during the interview, Lava once again claimed that Chris never committed any wrongdoing against him, so it seems like the presentation was disingenuous from the start. But no matter how much Prism's mishandling negatively affected the information getting out, it's important to note that none of this fully discredits that Chris is a weirdo. Mudahar of Some Ordinary Gamers eventually reached out to Lava to get the full story. One of the more important parts of the allegations was addressed, when Lava and Chris met in real life. My family goes to North Carolina every year for vacation. We stay in a very nice camper at a nice campground. It happens to be two hours away from the Mr. B studio. And I'd been helping with some beast gaming videos remotely at the time, instead of doing it remotely, okay? Uh, my parents drove me to the studio and met the entire crew. They knew where I was and met the crew before leaving. I helped record some videos and then my parents picked me up and left. 
With the stuff about lava that was publicly released already being concerning, internet investigators began digging deeper. Eventually, they came upon a Reddit post in which Chris said, Why would you use your VR headset for anything other than 3D lolly gang- Maybe this could be chalked up to a joke where Chris genuinely not into lolly material, but I'm not so sure. He also thanks someone for linking him to a subreddit called Real Scat Girls, but that's more gross than evil. Bro, or sis rather, was poop maxing. In another post, he replied to someone who said, the joke is that Shadman makes out of anything, with it ain't unless it's got a she penis. What do you mean by that? One of the more strange and disturbing turns of events is that a picture of Chris with Finster and a certain Jean Hollywood resurfaced. I'll preface this by saying that guilt by association isn't legitimate grounds to accuse someone of anything, but it is very much worth noting that Jean Hollywood was directly implicated in the Giggly Goon Clown case, being part of the Discord server where goon material was shared and praising EPI, meaning early introduction, in reference to grooming by getting kids into not safe for work content as early as possible. It's relevant to note here that Jean is also trans, and one of the recurring themes in Goon and EPI circles is grooming kids into taking estrogen. Coincidentally, Chris's Steam account, which had Lava as a friend, by the way, was named Estrogen Dealer. Of course, this doesn't mean that Chris was directly associated with any of these people beyond having met Jean in real life, but it definitely doesn't look great. With all of this brewing online, a number of other allegations began to pour out. An anonymous account posted DMs that supposedly showed Chris Tyson exchanging inappropriate texts with someone when they were 14 years old. The first issue with this is that the ClipHub tweet claims that Chris was 18 when this happened, but this is patently impossible since the DM supposedly happened in 2020 when he was far older. But maybe this could be a simple case of the evidence being misrepresented by the ClipHub account. As in the DMs, the person who was supposedly receiving messages from Chris claims that they themselves were currently 18, but were 14 when the messages were exchanged in 2020. Nowhere in the attached images and videos does the person claim Chris was 18. The date is internally consistent, as the DMs show Chris talking about a Mr. Beast video that was released four years ago. There's also an issue with the video provided, where the person is scrolling through their DMs with Chris. However legitimate it may initially initially seem, since they click on Chris's profile and the link takes them to the real one, meaning this wasn't a fake account just using the same name, the word today briefly appears at the top of the chat. This would mean that they couldn't possibly be from 2020, obviously. There is an off chance that the today thing was a glitch, but again, this is more than enough to seriously discredit these specific allegations. Another set of messages was also released between Chris and someone claiming to be an underage fan. Here, we can see what appears to be Chris sending kisses and heart emojis to them, and occasionally calling them dad. There was a third evidence drop regarding Chris. Chris. This time, recordings of Discord calls in which inappropriate comments were made in the presence of minors. Dude, I would inside of that egg and then watch her eat it and then watch her have sex with another man while she comments about how my genitalia can never satisfy her. It also definitely looks bad that Chris apparently deleted their entire Snapchat account once people started posting these things. But people still had many questions about the context of this recording and the prior messages. It's important to note all this stuff took place shortly after one of the biggest streamers, Dr. Disrespect, was exposed for allegedly making plans to meet up with a minor over the now defunct Twitch Whisper app. This is why he was banned on Twitch back in 2020, which only came to light recently. In response, Doc said, were there messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind those messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes leaned too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. Now, we don't know what went on in those messages, but the implication here is that Doc was making some inappropriate remarks to a minor, knew he did it, and didn't want it to get out, so he just hit it. A lot of people called out Doc for this, and rightfully so. However, many believe there's been a significantly larger amount of people hand-wringing and being strangely quiet or vague about the Chris situation. For example, why did Pokemon and Valkyrie both condemn Doc, but when asked about Chris Tyson, Pokemon said, I don't know all the details regarding that Ava situation, but I want to make it clear. Any inappropriate behavior towards minors is unacceptable, regardless of who you are. She and Valkyrie then went on to talk about how disappointing it is that many are going to use the Ava situation to criticize the trans community rather than seek justice. Sneeko commented on the situation, saying, These two Twitch streamers uh, females, where is the consistency? When are you gonna go and disavow Chris and Mr. Beast? You have way more information. You actually have the receipts and you haven't said a word yet. Immediately, Dr. Respect, ew, disgusting, worst person ever. Chris from Mr. Beast silent. And you know why? because he's a transgender. This would be a decent point, but there are also a lot of problems here. First off, Sneeko has previously expressed his admiration for the movie Cuties, which isn't just tantamount to Chris liking Lolly, it's even worse since the children being sexualized in the movie are real children. Additionally, Sneeko has a history of being purposely vague about the age of consent whenever pressed on it. What do you think the age of consent should be? I think it should be past the age, at a developed age, Dustin. At a develop, what is a developed age? Well, if you had to set a law for it, what would you set it about? It's a developed age. No, answer the question, you fucking pussy. 
say the least, he's not really someone to listen to about this situation. As soon as Dr. Disrespect made his statement around 2 p.m. on June 25th of 2024, Valkyrie and Pokimane posted their callouts because he basically admitted to what he was accused of. But when the Chris Tyson allegations came out, their statements were much more vague. On the surface, this looks like hypocrisy, and I don't really like that the main focus here is on I hope this doesn't make trans people look bad, as opposed to Chris Tyson allegedly did something bad. But what's important to note here is that these statements were made before Chris had even responded. Valkyrie's was on 12:30 p.m. on the 23rd, and Pokey's was posted four minutes later. Chris's statement was posted three hours later that same day, at which point Valkyrie called Chris disappointing and disgusting. Pokimane hasn't made a follow-up, and she should if she's going to comment on this stuff publicly. But realistically, is there really a big point to get them on here? I personally don't think so. I don't think either of these people have a vested interest in protecting anyone they believe is a creep. Although the focus of their initial tweets was definitely off. The dishonesty in Sneeko's approach is also flagrant in how he accused Moist Critical of sweeping up the allegations to protect Chris, and once Critical did make a video on it, he changed his tune to claiming he didn't do it sufficiently. This is clearly because of the personal grudge he has against Critical for rolling him and smoking him in the mad clip debacle. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags. It's worth noting, however, that Sneeko also worked for Mr. Beast at one point in time. And according to him... Yeah, I remember Chris saying, like, isn't she hot? Isn't, like, Cashmere Saigo, she, like, isn't she, like, 14? Is she 14 years old? Yeah, it's jailbait. And I'm like, what? Chris once referred to the Cash Me Outside girl as hot and jailbait, which, if true, is pretty foul. But the sting of this particular accusation was not only subtracted from due to it coming from Sneeko, who's more than once found himself sounding really bad when it came to talking about minors, but also because a clip emerged of Mr. Beast making a similar remark about the same girl in a joking context. True. And he did say that he um, enjoys the Cash Me Outside girl and thinks she's funny, so... Just let's let's just, be real. You want to put your dick in her? Given they all work together at some point, it's not too far-fetched to consider the possibility that this was a big joke between them. Not a cool joke, a very dated, uncool, and unfunny joke, but a joke nonetheless. What is less easy to explain as a joke is his promotion of the leaked nudes of Jeanette McCurdy, Sam from iCarly, to his audience, which he knows is mostly composed of minors. You'll probably see the photos get taken down at some point tonight, maybe tomorrow, because Nickelodeon has that kind of power. But um, the link's in the description if you want to see them. I mean, I'm not endorsing people to go look at somebody else's is private business, but I know that, you know, people might want to see him, so there, it's there if you want it. All of this commotion became so loud that a response from Chris addressing it became inevitable. Eventually, it came via Twitter, which read, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if I hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best that I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. I want to add, I never groomed anyone. The person who gets brought up in these accusations, at Lava GS, has vocally supported that they are false. Having said that, I humbly apologize to anyone I have hurt with my unacceptable social media posts, past actions, and to the those who may feel betrayed by how I used to act online. To lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond bad edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. In past years, I have learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can continue to work on myself. I don't want these accusations to impact the hundreds of people who work at Mr. Beast, which is why I have stepped away. It's interesting that the grooming allegations are promptly denied, but none of the Shadman related stuff is even brought up, which signals that Chris doesn't even want to give that attention because of how weird it is. All there is is the vague reference to bad edgy jokes, but clearly his interest in the kind of art Shadman made went beyond finding it funny. Another potential sign that Chris purposely wants this connection to be buried and never brought up is a DM Chris allegedly exchanged with a former commentary channel called Jalen, in which Chris can be seen saying they didn't know about the stuff Shadman did, which many see as a lie of the highest degree. Some people saw Chris's tweets as a sign of the tides turning, but really, the brunt of the problem was still very much undealt with. Multiple accounts can be seen coping about how this is somehow Chris being a victim of transphobia, or that the Shadman stuff didn't mean that that much. On July 24th, 2024, Mr. Beast put out a statement. I've become aware of the very serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I've been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. You'd think that Jimmy stepping in and not only addressing the situation, but announcing that he'd have a third party investigate it will put an end to this dark chat. After. Ultimately, if the public debacle had ended right there, whatever findings came from the investigation would probably stay private, and that just didn't sit well with the people who wanted the full story of Chris Tyson. While Lava GS, someone closely associated with Chris and in his Discord server, threw water on the raging fire that was all of the allegations, two former mods of his server, Nathan W and Cookie of Gods, came out to set the record straight. First, Nathan made this video about Lava's statement. 
Chris Dyson from Mr. Beast used me, manipulated me, and did very inappropriate things with me while I was about 15 years old. I was actually friends with Lava GS at the time, who is the main victim of Chris that everyone has been talking about these last few days, who claims he isn't a victim, but we all know he is, and we all know he probably got paid off. Not only that, but he's also under an NDA from when he worked for Mr. Beast Gaming for two years, and he tried to get me to join Mr. Beast Gaming himself, Lava. He's the one who actually sent me the contract and tried to get me to sign the NDA, at which point I ended our friendship because I knew they were just trying to silence me. It's important to say here that despite many of Nathan's claims being very much true, someone who worked at Mr. Beast Gaming claimed no contract was ever sent to anyone named Nathan. This could just mean that Nathan turned down the offer before a contract was sent, but still, for the sake of posterity, it should be mentioned. Nathan proceeds to claim that he and Lava, along with a few other miners, did a lot of unpaid paid work for Chris and were often subject to Chris bringing up sexual topics to them, despite knowing that they were underage. Nathan adds that this went beyond just strange conversations, as Chris actually showed them on a few occasions. From referring to people in this in-group of minors as dad or daddy, to having a bot set up that did nothing but spam this is definitely not just irresponsibility and negligence at work. Eventually, this private Discord server that had Chris and several minors was going to go public, at which point he had to scrub it clean of anything not safe for work and racist jokes. This is something Lava GS incorrectly claimed never happened in his original tweet about it. Soon after this started getting a lot of traction, Nathan started working with Cookie of Gods, who had downloaded full logs of Chris's Discord server that confirmed everything Nathan was talking about to be real. This caused Lava to retract a portion of his statement, which I'll get into later. Nathan states that his only beef with Lava is due to him actively trying to discredit other people despite admittedly not having the best recollection of what went on in the server. Just a couple of days after Mr. Beast's statement, the full leaks of the Discord server were made available to the public. Despite the dump showing how the server was after Chris had it purged of stuff before the server became public, there was still a heap of evidence. The images show that, besides the regular server, Chris also had a private server. And in its chat room, he can be seen asking for the source of a gif, presumably so he could, uh, personally consume it. Soon after, he began talking about dumping traps onto another secret chat room, and talking about deleting it later to make it seem like it never happened. But the Logan Paul strategy of claiming a prolonged lapse of judgment can't work in this situation because all the way back in early 2019, the users of his server were already bringing the not safe for work issue to his attention, saying it was a problem due to the amount of kids who were in the server. Someone replied to the person who brought it up, saying that the not safe for work channels required you to be 18, but all this means is that a pop-up asked you if you're 18, which can be obviously bypassed. As a consequence of this exchange, other users began weighing in and saying that not safe for work should be relegated to edgy memes, but that should be forbidden. But this was to no avail, as one of these servers' moderators swung the hammer and said that the pop-up was enough. Eventually, it was removed for the non-staff users on the server. Apparently, after November 2018, Chris locked the not safe for work channel so that only his mods could access it, his mods being minors, as we've previously established. To make matters worse, he was considering extending the not safe for work channel to also cover gore, meaning he either intended to partake in or welcome the sharing of gore material, again, with minors. We're not talking about one or two members, we're talking about active members frequently engaged in very inappropriate conversations being very young. And despite Chris apparently knowing this to be the case, nothing was done to either get them out of the server or curb the discussion of not safe for work topics around them. Some of them we already know. Lava GS, for example, who is 15 to 16 years old and a moderator of the server. Based on the analysis of one particularly thorough user of Kiwi Farms, there were up to 31 minors on the server, the youngest one potentially being just 10 years old since they mentioned being in fifth grade, and seven of them being part of the staff. A member called Daddy Log, who said they were 12 on one occasion, which is probably a joke, doesn't really look good when they're referred to as a designated lolly by other members. What makes this even more concerning is the possibility that there were multiple predators on the server. While many members were minors, many weren't, yet took part in sharing not safe for work material and talking about inappropriate things with them. There's simply no excusing it as him not knowing since Chris himself is on record saying the average age of the server is 14, which, while probably not true, is a sign of his awareness. Despite this, he shared Shadman's site multiple times, talked about trapping another member of the server, Server, which he immediately clarified meant forced feminization, a fetish that's very closely associated with gooning, EPI, and other equally unsavory things, and at one point suggested he was aroused to an attached image of a 14-year-old. I'm not sure how far the joke justification goes in situations like these. Besides a whopping 288 mentions of Lolly in the server's chat, there are a few other highlights of Chris's interactions in it, such as when someone named Discount Milk told him to ditch his wife, to which Chris replied that he'd love to sell everything he had to live in an apartment, watch anime, and play video games all day. In another 
instance of their interaction. Discount Milk is once again pushing Chris to spend time with him instead of with his wife, which is very interesting because in the wake of all this newer information, Lava took to Twitter once again to partially recant his initial defense of Chris and weigh in on the Discord leaks, saying, Based on the recent screenshots and messages, I would like to say a statement about the Discord. This was five or six years ago, and I thought I had a good memory of the situation, but I was wrong. After reading the chat logs, this stuff was inappropriate and wrong. I spoke based on my memory of the situation, and I still do not remember these conversations, but they definitely happened. These conversations should not have happened with people at the age I was at the time. I strongly condemn it. I still believe I'm not a victim, but these conversations should not have happened with me and any other minor in the server. I was a minor in the situation and not the adult influencer who shouldn't have allowed this to happen. I did not see this as wrong at the time. There's a few individuals in the leaks who deserve to be investigated. One named Milk, who was an IRL friend of Chris and the same age as them. They were someone me and Nathan grew to despise, and I'm sure he'll agree with me on that. He was a disturbed individual, and we fought tooth and nail with Chris to get him banned, which did eventually happen. I wasn't involved in the Not Safe for Work channel, as you can tell from the leaks, which is probably why I don't remember it. For those thinking I was paid off or forced to sign an NDA, that would be very irrational for anyone to do. If what Lava said is true, it confirms the presence of another person that needs to be investigated, and also one that is an IRL friend of Chris's. How does that look juxtaposed with all the dad stuff and the promotion of Not Safe for Work content creators like Belle Delphine and Shadman? Now, I'll only be mentioning this for context because I don't think it's good to bring attention to what is tantamount to false accusations when I'm trying to adequately cover the sensitive topic. A day after those leaks came out, someone named Muskina took to Twitter to make another series of allegations against Chris, but when they were both adults, and outright said they were coerced throughout the thread. For the sake of both of our times, while her intimate relationship with Chris is definitely real, literally none of the screenshots presented show any evidence of abusive behavior. What can be extracted from this gigantic thread, however, is that Muskina wanted more out of the relationship than sex, whether that had come in the form of a more serious relationship or in the form of unique business opportunities. These didn't materialize, and so Muskina claimed that this was sexual abuse, meaning they had sex under false pretenses. First off, from what I've seen, at no point did Chris promise business opportunities in exchange for sex. Even if both people contributed to this narrative, it was never ratified or established. Since this was unspoken and presumed on Muskina's part to turn around and claim this was by deception, despite the fact that you're both two consenting adults, is nothing compared to the other genuine allegations revolving around Chris. If you want to claim it's bad form for Chris to have let on some random person for a while in exchange for sex, despite being a parent and part of a business that relies on public perception, go right ahead. Then again, it's not like Muskina wasn't actively trying to establish that relationship either, so to point the finger in this situation is kind of ridiculous. Regardless, what does matter in this story is that one of the tweets in the thread talks about Chris leaving for Japan for a brief period. This correlates with a set of tweets Chris made addressing the connection with Goon Clown through Jean Hollywood that I mentioned earlier. In it, while defending himself and claiming he had no idea who Jean was, he, whether on accident or on purpose, threw Finster under the bus, claiming that they were together. This information was reiterated in a DM reply to someone where Chris says the exact same thing. It's been speculated that the only reason Chris is so forthright with providing context for that picture is because he resented Finster for making him a third wheel and rejecting his advances. Make of that what you will, but given the circumstances and all of Chris's previously established tastes in the arts, it's not too far-fetched to consider the possibility he has no issue with the goon stuff those people espoused. Last but not least, at one point, Mr. Beast himself talked about Chris's penis in a joking way, but at this point, based on his relative inactivity on the server, it's not confirmed if he knew the ages of the other members or the extent of the discussion or activity on the server. As time went on, Chris's case became increasingly worse, and as it turns out, Sunny V2 calling that whole thing a nightmare? Uh, he was wrong, but also he couldn't have known how right he would be. The latest update to this story is that the website that originally hosted the Chris Tyson leaks was taken down. According to Nathan, this is likely because of a cease and desist. An ex-employee who posted a video accusing Mr. Beast of running illegal lotteries on his channel has also claimed the same, with a screenshot of the cease and desist he received. Meanwhile, Mr. Beast has already uploaded a new video to his YouTube channel, so it's unlikely we'll receive closure on these stories for a long time. Ivan Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone.